Well, ladies and gentlemen, why is the scientific establishment so afraid to state the obvious? Are you aware that for every one star in our galaxy, there are, by some estimates, thousands of interstellar objects drifting? We are swimming in a cosmic ocean of debris from other star systems. And yet, when we find an object as we did with Oumuamua, and now this one that defies all our natural explanations, what do we do? We sadly default to the most boring answer. Right now, as you watch this, as the mainstream is patting itself on the back, data from NASA's Deep Space Network is telling us something extraordinary. The latest images from the interstellar visitor known as 3i divided by Atlas have revealed something so strange, so unexpected, that it is forcing my colleagues, however reluctantly, to question everything they thought they knew about space itself. Because for the first time in history, it looks like something is not just growing. It is activating on an object from another star system. The story begins several months ago, as it did with Oumuamua, with NASA's Pan-STARRS Observatory. They spotted the faint, fast-moving object entering our solar system from deep interstellar space. At first glance, it seemed routine. Another interstellar traveler, much like Oumuamua or Borisov, but three, I divided by Atlas, did not behave like a rock. Oumuamua did not behave like a rock. When will we learn to accept the data? It shimmered faintly, not reflecting sunlight as expected, but glowing softly. Not a reflection, it's an emission. As though something on its surface was alive, or at least reacting. Uh, astronomers quickly turned the world's most powerful instruments toward it. The James Webb Space Telescope, the Hubble, and even ground-based observatories in Chile and Hawaii. What they found sent ripples of disbelief, or perhaps denial across the scientific community. Under ultraviolet and infrared filters, sections of three I divided by Atlas began to change color. Not randomly, but gradually, like the way moss spreads on a stone. My colleagues call this biologically patterned crystallization, this is a complex way of saying it is organized. Nature produces fractals. Nature does not, as a rule, produce geometric clusters of complex organic molecules on a dead rock. This is not moss. This is something else. It wasn't just a reflection of light. Uh, the spectrum indicated chemical activity, carbon chains, trace amounts of nitrogen, and most shockingly, organic molecules forming in geometric clusters. Some NASA researchers described it as biologically patterned crystallization. Others simply said, it looks like something is growing. But how could that be? The immediate objection, of course, is that space is brutal to life, temperatures near absolute zero, radiation strong enough to tear molecules apart, no atmosphere. This is a failure of imagination. We are applying our own fragile, water-based biology to the entire universe. Any civilization capable of interstellar travel would not be so constrained. They would build machines or seeds that use the radiation, that thrive in the cold. Yet, here was an object from beyond the solar system displaying surface activity that mimicked biological behavior, spreading, adapting, evolving in real time. The first images that NASA released were subtle, just small specks of color variation on the rocky body. But within days, new images revealed patches of strange filament-like structures forming along its edges. They look like frost at first, but unlike ice, these structures absorbed light instead of reflecting it. Their chemical composition didn't match any known mineral or compound. When analyzed spectroscopically, the data showed something remarkable. They were carbon-based, but with an organized lattice. The data is clear. Carbon-based and organized lattice. This is not random chemistry. This is a structure. This is evidence. This sent NASA's astrobiology division into a frenzy. Could we be witnessing the first ever signs of interstellar life? Not from Mars, not from Europa, but from an object that originated light years away. Dr. Karen Mitchell, one of uh, NASA's leading exobiologists, put it beautifully, 
If these patterns are biological, it means life didn't just start on Earth. It means uh, life travels like a cosmic seed carried across galaxies by rocks like this one. This is panspermia. It is a reasonable theory, but we must also consider the bolder theory, directed panspermia, or simpler still, that this is not a seed for life. This is an artifact, a probe, a piece of dormant technology. To understand how something like this could happen, we need to think of the universe not as a cold void, but as a living system. Every comet, every asteroid, every fragment of dust might be carrying the building blocks of life, frozen in time, waiting for the right conditions to awaken. When three, I divided by Atlas, entered our solar system, it crossed through regions bathed in sunlight for the first time in perhaps millions of years. That energy, photons traveling across 93 million miles, struck its surface, hitting it, activating chemical reactions, long dormant, and perhaps, just perhaps, that energy triggered something ancient. The hypothesis is that sunlight, photons, woke it up. If this is true, it is the most profound discovery in human history. It implies a hibernating technology designed to activate when it approaches a star. Our star, um, scientists are predictably uh, cautious. They don't want to declare life prematurely, but even the most conservative voices admit that what we are seeing is unlike anything we've ever recorded before. When the Webb telescope captured new thermal images, researchers noticed a faint rhythmic heat emission as though parts of the object were absorbing sunlight and releasing it in pulses. This is the smoking gun, a faint rhythmic heat emission, not random, structured, mathematical, purposeful. These are the words my colleagues are using themselves, yet they still shy away from the obvious conclusion. This is not geology. Some theorists are daring to suggest that three I divided by Atlas might not be entirely natural, that perhaps what we are seeing is not life as we know it, but the remnants of something engineered long ago. Let us stop daring to suggest. Let us state the hypothesis clearly. This is precisely my point. We must stop looking for life as we know it. We must look for technology we don't know. A biological machine a seed of intelligence. Many of you watching might remember the excitement of 1969, the first moon landing. Or perhaps you remember when Voyager 1 crossed into interstellar space. For decades, we've been the ones reaching outward. But now, for the third time in recorded history, something from beyond has reached us. And uh, unlike any visitor before it, three I divided by Atlas might be carrying a story. And now, the most compelling data, as new images arrived, scientists noticed something else. Faint emissions, like whispers in the radio spectrum, synchronized with the object's rotation. At first, they were dismissed as cosmic noise. But when those signals were analyzed, a pattern emerged, one eerily similar to sequences found in DNA coding. Not identical, of course, but ordered, structured, my colleagues ask if it is primitive communication. I ask, is it a signal? Is it a system rebooting, transmitting information, its findings, perhaps back to its origin? We are seeing the output of a process, and that process appears to be intelligent. Let's take a moment to imagine that. A fragment of matter forged around another star, drifting through space for millions of years, carrying within it the blueprint for life and then by pure cosmic coincidence, it passes near our sun and the light of a new star brings it back to life. Um, NASA and ESA are currently analyzing these findings. Uh, predictably, they are comparing them to uh, known abiotic processes, um, cryovolcanism, um, solar radiation chemistry. Uh, this is the dust bunny argument all over again. It is what the mainstream always does. They are trying to find a natural explanation for data that is, by its nature, unnatural. And yet, none of those explanations perfectly fit. The structures seem too organized, too purposeful. And here's 
where things take an even more mysterious turn. As 3i divided by Atlas moved closer to the sun, it began to shed particles, tiny specks drifting behind it like a luminous tail. The James Webb Space Telescope captured these particles, reflecting light in strange, almost iridescent patterns. Some of them appeared to contain microscopic structures, spherical, hollow, and arranged in repeating geometric patterns. When scientists enhanced the images, the comparison was inevitable. They looked like spores. Um, spores, again, the life hypothesis. It is possible, but what if they are not spores but nanomachines? Self-contained, resilient um, probes. If we are witnessing panspermia, it may not be the blind, random process we imagine. It may be intentional. And if even a fraction of that theory holds true, then the universe isn't just a collection of dead worlds. Of course, skeptics are quick to point out that uh, life as we understand it requires liquid water, atmosphere, and stable temperatures. They are looking for Earth-like conditions on an interstellar artifact. This is short-sighted. It is like an ant, assuming all intelligent life must also live in an ant hill and communicate with pheromones. Perhaps that's our limitation. Perhaps life doesn't always need to look like us. And that brings us to the philosophical heart of this mystery. If 3i divided by Atlas truly shows signs of biological or pre-biological growth, it means we are not the center of creation. We are part of a cosmic continuum. When I think about that, I'm reminded of something Carl Sagan once said. We are a way for the cosmos to know itself. Maybe three I divided by Atlas is another way. NASA's upcoming missions are now prioritizing deeper observation. The plan is to use the James Webb Telescope spectrograph to analyze the light bouncing off the object with even higher precision. If the spectral signatures continue to show complex organic patterns, it would be the strongest evidence yet that three I divided by Atlas isn't just a rock. It is a message, and that message is not just that uh, life is out there. The message is that intelligence is out there, that technology is out there, that they have been here. Umuamua was the first. Now we have three I divided by Atlas. We are no longer the ones reaching out. We are the ones being visited, and we are not even recognizing our guests. For those who've watched the cosmos all their lives, from the moon landing to the Mars rover, from Voyager to the James Webb, this is the next great chapter. So I'll leave you with this thought. If NASA's images are indeed showing something activating on three, I divided by Atlas, then perhaps we're not witnessing the beginning of life, but the continuation of it. The lesson here is simple, and it is one I've been saying for years. We must not be afraid to follow the evidence no matter where it leads. The greatest risk is not in speculation. The greatest risk is in a lack of imagination. The cost of being wrong about this is nothing. The cost of being right and ignoring it is the future of humanity. So I ask you, do you agree with the consensus that this is just another rock? Or do you, like me, see the data for what it is the most important discovery of all time? The mainstream wants to call this a natural phenomenon. I call it a technological artifact. What does the evidence say to you? Let me know your analysis in the comments below. And if you believe in following the data, subscribe to this channel. We need more voices willing to challenge the consensus.